Hello, I'm going to demonstrate the user interface on the Shearwater Tarek. If you own a Tarek, I hope that you find it easy enough to use without this video, but for those of you that don't, I'd like to introduce how it works. We have four buttons labeled Light, Menu, Info, and Funk or Function. The Light button is a bit of a misnomer. It steps between brightness levels and the light is really always on, but brightness does not fit on the bezel. So I can choose an off option, and that completely turns off the screen for about six months of standby time. Any button will wake it up, where it then shows the contact information and tests the audible beep and vibration motor. So I'm gonna show you how to use the menu button now to change a setting. We'll turn off those uh, alerts. So pressing menu brought up the menu, and then the on-screen hints tell me how to navigate the menus. I can enter into this alerts menu and choose the setting that suits me best. And I'm gonna completely silence those alarms. Um, next, we can cover the info button. This center row here is the information row. Pressing this button steps through the various displays that are enabled based on your current mode. Pressing the menu button will drop you back to the home screen or I could wrap around uh, right back to the home. Most of the info screens will also time out after about 10 seconds back to the home row. Finally, we have the funk button, the function button, which can be customized. I've got it right now set to the compass, which is the default for most modes. That's brought up now uh, the screen hints that tell me what each button does. So let me go to the compass and I'll bring up the compass and now I've marked it, so I have this mark heading to help me navigate back to where I have uh, set that mark. Also in that, in that menu I can unmark or turn on this show. What that does is it brings up this overlay uh, that's available regardless of what you've got on the screen that will always point to north. And then if I then say mark a heading, up at the top there I get a green dot that helps me navigate back to where I had marked. So now say you don't care about the compass and you'd like to use some other function on the funk button. We'll press menu to bring up menus, scroll into the settings and in the dive setup I can choose an option for the function button. So that will depend, um, the list of options will depend on what uh, mode I'm in. You have an independent uh, setup for every mode. So I can come into closed circuit bailout and that's not going to affect what I had set up in my in my open circuit recreational there. So for example I could set up in closed circuit to have it switch my my PPO2 set point and then when I'm in the bailout mode um, have it select my gas. Let's drop back to the main screen here. Now we can see I'm in closed circuit mode and I've got my set point there. Bring this up, confirm that I'm gonna switch my set point, and now I'm at the high set point. Or bring up the, again. Now if I didn't have it assigned there, that option would still be available in the menu system. And when I'm in bailout, I've set this up to be select gas, so a very quick shortcut to come in and select a new gas. When I'm in watch mode, the buttons do very much the same thing. Brings up the menu, uh, changes the brightness, the light button, or the info button changes information on the screen. The funk button is once again a customizable function. By default it switches through different watch screens, but that again can be customized in the settings under watch. So I will switch that now to something new for example, bring up a flashlight or bring up a stopwatch or a timer. Let's have it bring up the timer. Again, so I've brought up a little app. Button labels tell me what the buttons do. I can start my, my timer. Okay, or I could uh, edit it. And it's, it's, it always tells you what you're changing. And set it to vibrate only perhaps, okay. Very easy, add a minute, there you go. So the final thing I wanna show is 
how the interface is very, very similar to previous Shearwater products. The bottom right button steps through information screens. The bottom left button brings up menus and then scrolls through the options. And then this button here uh, executes the option and we're scrolling through options and then save it. Okay. So in the menu system, you practically only need these two buttons and that's how it's been designed because these two buttons are very easy to press. So it's just press, 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 alternating back and forth between these two buttons. Uh, the extra buttons allow you to, you know, go back or to go up or change a setting if you've gone in the wrong direction. That's the nice thing about the four button interface. But let's see how it's very, very similar to uh, previous products. Here we have the Shearwater Perdix, Perdix product. And bottom right, it's going to step through my info screens, bring us back to home, and then bring up the menus, step through the menus, select into it, step through the settings, and select it. It's actually like the very exact same button sequences to change a gas or to get into the menus or switch to bailout uh, on the Tarek as it is for all of our previous products such as the Predator, Petrol, Perdix, Nerd 2, very consistent. So if you've used a Shearwater product, you'll find the Tarek very familiar despite the new four button interface. Thank you.